Hello guys, time for our monthly tradition on this channel, tips and tricks about Laravel for the last month that I collected on Twitter. Today I have 14 tips and tricks for you in a rapid fire way as usual, but if any of those tips is more interesting to you and you want me to dive deeper, let me know in the comments and I may shoot separate videos on some of the topics. Also, I will announce that I will take a little bit of a break from this channel for the rest of this week. I will be traveling to London to Laravel Live UK, where I will look closely at Filament for announcement and its details and more topics and I will cover that next week on this channel. So let's begin with tip number one and this is actually a story, live wire optimization story, a thread by Quentin. He found unexpected performance bottleneck in live wire and if we scroll down and I will link all the tweets in the description below and you may read them in full but this is basically the main thing. Get computed property names was called too many times. And the actual reason, as Quentin is saying, every time you access a computed property in Livewire, it runs a method that resolves all the available computer methods in your component. So yeah, the main tip from that is be careful with computed properties if you have a lot of them and check the full thread by Quentin for more details. The next tip comes from myself. It's a quick way to introduce a middleware to throttle some of the route, for example, registration or login to protect from bots and spammers. It's very easy. Just add middleware throttle how many times per one minute. And this is not only a technical tip, also why you would want to do that is to avoid overwhelming your queue and extra bills from providers if you're sending SMS messages or emails after the registration. The next tip comes from Steve Bauman and he's talking about a new validation rule called in array keys in Laravel 12. And this is the example. So in this case, the validation rule checks if config array contains at least one of those three either API key or access token or OAuth token. Pretty practical example. In generally, I like that new features or new syntax options are released with very practical examples instead of just full bar or hello world in the code. The next tip comes from myself and this is another thing about Laravel 12, a new thing to resource. And I shared that already on this channel in a YouTube short from what I remember, but I want to emphasize one thing. So this new syntax in Laravel 12 allows you to not do return new user resource. Instead from eloquent model or eloquent collection, you do to resource. And if you have that resource with the naming convention like user resource in the app HTTP resources folder, then Laravel will automatically find it. But this is not only about automating the finding process, it's also no import on top. So when you're doing user resource or user resource collection, you need to autocomplete with your IDE or manually add use on top with to resource you don't need to add anything anywhere. So just from that point of view, it may be more convenient. The next tip comes from Excel, and this is about the cases where you want to fake the data, but somehow in a realistic way. So for realistic avatars, you may use something like this. Here's the zoomed in version of the code in the factory, in the configure after creating, in this case, creating user record in user factory. You may call the API of this person does not exist. It's not even an API, you just call the URL like this if we refresh a few times a few more pictures appear i'm actually not sure if that person really does not exist so comment below if you know more about this project but i thought it was just a cool tip to make avatars more realistic the next tip comes from myself and it's about updating the eloquent model i'm not sure whether this tweet became popular with 139 lines because of the tip itself or because i presented it in a meme but the main message is this, touch method on eloquent model will update the specify column value with now. These are identical. And if you don't specify any column, it would touch or update the updated at column. Simple, for readability you may prefer still the two line way, but I just shared it on Twitter and apparently a lot of people liked it. The next tip comes from Ash Allen and it's about PHP, not about Laravel. Did you know that str replace function may accept the array of strings? Again, the zoomed in version of the picture str replace keywords is array where for example, you want to replace Laravel to update it in all of those strings and this would be the result. It's one of those examples where PHP language function is powerful and totally usable. You don't have to necessarily have str helper from Laravel. And this 
was one of my points for the course called PHP for Laravel developers released a few years ago, but still relevant. So in Laravel, you may use a lot of PHP features like try catches, if else, and others, which are kind of fundamentals, but there are quite a lot of details that people don't know, including, for example, one of the tutorial was about string functions and similar array functions. So Ash is presenting one of those kind of less known feature of well-known PHP function. And another kind of side note on PHP versus Laravel, recently on Laravel Daily, we published an article called Large Open Source Projects Built with PHP Without Any Framework. So there's no Symfony or Laravel. So we found seven big projects like this, and we listed them in this article. I will link that in the description below. It's free, no membership required. The next tip comes from myself, and I tweet a lot about hashtag practical Laravel docs. So I gather Laravel docs topics and then come up with a different example than the default docs. And I've collected the most popular ones. This one got 130 likes. So this is the example of eloquent accessor. But what some developers don't realize is that you can combine accessor from different attributes of the same model. So it doesn't have to be one attribute or the same attribute transformed. Like for example, first name uppercase could be an example accessor, but also full address with multiple attributes is also possible. And the next tip, we're not running away from attributes. Attributes is actually a property in Eloquent model. If you want to set the default values for Eloquent fields, database columns, but not in the database. The default most common place to do that is in Laravel migration. So default false or default zero or default whatever. But did you know you may also do that on eloquent level? So then, for example, you may change the default value logic in the code without touching the database. So for example, you change your mind or a client change their mind. And then from now on, from tomorrow's deployment, for example, the default value should be different. And for that, you just change the eloquent model logic and all the records of the same database table stay with older defaults. So sometimes in some cases, doing that in the database is more flexible. The next tip comes from Freck from Spotty. So did you know that Laravel has a time box class? And even if you notice that class being released, it's not really obvious when in what cases you would use that. So in this case, the zoomed in version ensures that this call happens in 100 milliseconds, even if it actually takes fewer amount of milliseconds. So here's the documentation about it. That class ensures that given callback always takes a fixed amount of time. And this is kind of a security prevention, as you can see in the docs. So this is an example from Freck related to one-time password in the project by Spati. The next tip is also about Eloquent and also comes from myself. And this is such a classical thing, but I saw so many people liked it that it's kind of worth repeating. Maybe some of you would not know that you can specify with relationship and specify the columns of that related table. But also don't forget, as the comment says, to specify the ID because otherwise it may not work. Just try it out yourself and see what happens. The next tip comes from Osama and with config, you may want to wrap the config in classes. Let's take a look at an example. And here's the zoomed in version of the class called scraping B config, which uses the config under the hood as a helper config boolean, config string and others. But also it may have internal methods for more complex logic or for repeating logic. And then instead of referencing that by config, with string and dot notation, you reference that with class, which is auto completed with your IDE. This is kind of a general thing of object oriented programming. If you have more complex logic with like a few lines or a few conditions, it may be worth to create a method just for clear naming for those of you who would consume that method, who don't really care about what's inside, they want to just know is enabled or not. Just call that method and the logic is hidden in the config class. The next tip comes from Axel, who is a repeating guest in this video. And he shares a tip which is also kind of a classic and obvious, but so practical. If you have files associated with your eloquent models, you may create an observer. So on deleted and force deleted events, automatically delete the related files. An example that Laravel tips don't have to be groundbreaking or very complex. 
practical tips are also great. And the final tip for this video also comes from myself, also about eloquent and also about attributes. We're talking about attributes again, this time about the method called with attributes. So look at this example zoomed in. I hear I'm already losing my voice, so sorry, bear with me for one more tip here. So user has many posts and feature post is the relationship for specifically feature true. And if you want to create a featured post for the user, you may do user featured post create like this and you need to still provide feature true because that user feature post notation works for where condition but it doesn't work for create so if you want to reuse the same thing for create then with attributes would help you with that it will cover both where condition and create as well so if we zoom out again the create now doesn't require featured true if you provided that in with attributes quite a rare case scenario and i found out pretty recently but again judging from the people who liked it i thought it would be a cool thing to share so yeah, that's it. The tips for this month, for the month of May from Twitter. I will keep compiling tweets. So also follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the channel to get the collection of tips for June in July on YouTube. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.